How's it going, everybody? Eric here with Oakland Tobacconist. Thank you for joining us, I believe, for episode number nine of OGT Live here on the channel. I'm very excited about this particular uh, interview. Um, I actually haven't been able to get to see too many interviews with Paul Stulak. He has made some amazing cigars. So we're going to go ahead and delve into one of the more popular ones we have here available at the shop and online. So if you get a chance, there is a link in this video that will direct you to the El Nuevo Comienzo five pack. It's a discounted rate with that we're running on this cigar. It's a phenomenal cigar, Mexican San Andreas, Habano 2000 binder. And then the fillers I believe are from Nicaragua. Um, some of it is closed, some of it is disclosed. Um, but this cigar was released through the Nevada Cigar Club. And so this is the one we're smoking. Now this was done as a pair. So in other words, when it was first released, through the LCA, when we got a hold of it, there was two different ones, the Limitada, which we're smoking tonight, and uh, the uh, Exclusiva. The Exclusiva is a Connecticut Broadleaf. This one's Mexican San Andreas. Seemed like after trying both of them that the uh, the Limitada was more refined, more chocolate in nature. Uh, and so we're going to hear a lot of this straightly from uh, Paul Stulak. So seems that we have someone on here. Coffee and uh, Cigar Saturday, what time? So if you want to make it to Coffee and Cigars on Saturday, that is this Saturday at 10 o'clock. Just uh, either drop it in the comments, send me a message, click, uh, you can go onto our website and actually purchase um, the ticket and you can get that going as well. And we will certainly be there, there. So if you get a chance, go ahead and check it out. It's a great event. All Sinatra music. We have three different cigars that we pair with coffee. Um, and it's just a phenomenal time. So uh, we're also at Suvig Winery. We're going to be doing cigars and wine. And part of that, too, is we're going to be showcasing some of our house blend. Oakland Tobacconist released uh, the house blend called Cedar Car Cigars, which is three different blends from Nicaragua. Uh, that is a Connecticut, a Corojo, and a Maduro. We have the Ash Cat, the Iron Horse, and uh, the Night Owl. We did a live interview with Curtis Bailey, who is the gentleman who drew everything. Um, for all the label art. And if you haven't gotten a chance, also check out Cedar Car Cigars on our website. So as I say, we're just getting a few things uh, together here. And when we are ready to go, then we'll have Paul join us. So uh, those who are smoking tonight, go ahead and feel free to drop it inside the comments. Let us know what you're smoking or perhaps drinking, pairing together. Tonight with this particular cigar, it is full body. Um, or at least I would call it full body. Some might say medium plus. I'm actually pairing it with a bit of bourbon tonight. Tends to be the one my go-to um, here on the show. And so uh, the thing that's very interesting about this is, is I don't know how well you can see the Limitada. Uh, it has the title right here with Paul Stulak. Um, that's on the cello. So we're going to go ahead and remove that and get a look at this label. Let's see here. We have Francis. How's it going, Francis? Good to see you again. Thank you for joining and awesome. Glad you were able to try out the house blends. Glad you enjoyed them. Um, definitely if enjoying the Nicaraguan sort of richness and flavors. That's what you get from our house blends. We have Matt here also in the studio as well, enjoying a Ramoniones with Knob Creek bourbon. Ramoniones is a personal favorite of mine, so it's excellent, excellent. Uh, and then we have Risen Mits is a Monte Cristo Classic Series. Awesome. And let's see here. So we're just getting a message from Paul. Let's see here. Sorry, we're just having him join the um, the chat. Um, anyone else who is smoking, go ahead and feel free to drop it in the comments. Um, just bear with me one moment. Sorry about this, guys. Just making sure we, we have all this together here. Brief delay. Let's go here. And it looks like we're having, let's see here. Wait. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. And we're uh, having a brief delay on the link here. There we go. Awesome. Hey, how's it going? 
Sorry about that. Can you hear me all right? Okay, so right now, here, let's see. And Paul, right now, not sure why. Uh, try unmuting your mic. It might be muted right now. See, can can you hear me all right? You can hear me? I'm still not hearing you. Not sure why. Says uh, Mike is not connected to where you're at. Sorry, guys. Bear with us just one moment. I'm just getting this together. We're going to go ahead and try to add Paul in again. Smoking New World Toro. Awesome. Smoking a Hyena with Old Pulteney. That sounds like an excellent pairing, Francis. Uh, Old Pulteney is a great scotch. Smoking the Hyena, um, which is also a, an amazing uh, cigar. Cameroon from Black Label. Sorry, we're going to go ahead and get Paul back here just Better? once. There we go. Okay. It just I said that another app was using my microphone, which is kind of creepy in itself. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry about the delay, but thank you for being on our show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, what are you lighting up tonight? I have a no dress code lit up right now. Okay, okay. Um, no and no, now the no dress code, is that more of from your main line of cigars? No, the uh, no dress code was done as a sort of a side project to the other lines. And it was sort of a playground for me to just play with stuff and not have to release the blends and just kind of change it from time to time. But uh, it, it kind of turned into its own little brand. I don't know if you're familiar with how it awesome. started, but it was supposed to be a cigar that was a roller to smoker. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we have uh, quite a bit of people joining us on having some cigars tonight. Me personally, as you probably heard, I'm lighting up the Nuevo Comienzo Limitada, uh, awesome. Mexican San Andreas. This one's a personal favorite of mine. Uh, I I have to stop myself from actually smoking this one because I enjoy it too much. So <laughs> you get a home run on it for sure. Uh, where are you broadcasting from? Where are you coming from right now? I am from home in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So Far away from you. <laughs> what What's the time difference right now? Uh, it's uh, seven minutes after 10 p.m. right now. Okay. Okay. So about four hours. Awesome. Well, yeah. thank you for joining us here at Oakland Tobacconist. Our first introduction here at the shop to Paul Stulak Cigars was through the LCA. Um, so if you don't mind just kind of a bit of background, how did you get into cigars? What, what did that evolution look like? What was the journey? Uh, it was one of those things that started at a much younger age than probably uh, would make any sense uh, to try to convince somebody. It was just from being a little kid, I was always obsessed with cigars and uh, movies and TV shows and that kind of thing. And as I got older, I just started smoking, obviously. Yeah, and yeah. next, you know, I just told my buddies, I said, uh, I'm going to go get in the cigar business. Everybody said I was crazy. And uh, <laughs> that was, uh, I don't know, about almost close to 25 years ago now, 23 okay. years ago. Yeah. Now, was that in Nova Scotia or was that in the States? That was in Nova Scotia. That was with a kiosk in a mall uh, selling okay. all kinds of different cigars. And then I released a little house blend a few years after that. But it was um, it was short lived because it was a short run. Okay. Of cigars, but I always had it in the back of my head, to, you know, that I was going to do this again at some point. And in 2011, I started with the uh, the current label and everything else. And everyone convinced me to go to the trade show. I went to Vegas, one best new exhibitor of all things. Oh, nice. <laughs> and, yeah. And the next thing you know, I mean, it's 10 years later from then, which is oh, uh, this summer, okay. 10 years. Awesome. So before we completely delve into uh, your star line and Paul Dulac cigars, um, for anybody who's watching, if you'd like to smoke the Novia, no, Nuevo Comienzo, we have it in a link uh, to our website. Click on that link. We are running a special on a five pack. This is not one to miss. What I've been telling a lot of people based on smoking the cigar and smoking other cigars, if you have the patience, it will be very difficult. But if you have the patience, I foresee this cigar aging magnificently. 
It's definitely one that I think with as age continues, it's going to pop. So if you get a chance, that's the idea of having a five pack, smoke one out the gate, maybe try one a little after a while and then get them to age and notice that, that uh, journey of that cigar. So click on that link that is available, limited supply. So if you have a chance, I would advise it. Um, but in the name, you're absolutely, uh, you're absolutely right about that. That cigar is going to shine in, in a little bit of a uh, little bit more aging. Yeah. But even out the gate, it's phenomenal. So now, now you started and then left the industry for a little bit. Is that correct? No, so somewhere along the way that kind of got started. I never left the industry. I, I had a cigar lounge in okay. Halifax here, so I, and I was still making cigars and still uh, selling them, obviously, in my own uh, establishment. But there was still a lot of loyal customers that were carrying the cigar. I just wasn't aggressively going out and seeking accounts. And I, I had stopped going to the trade show. Uh, I just saw the decline in, in, the, in the trade shows over the years for the okay. smaller guys. I don't know how it is for the bigger guys. So I'm not trying to put the whole thing down as a, as a package, but for right. the little guy, it was just turning into a pretty expensive endeavor. Okay. So uh, I didn't, I never went away per se, I just kind of went into the shadows a little bit. Okay, okay. And then you, when you kind of went, went back to the forefront, that's when you released the Comienzo, is that correct? Uh, no, that was uh, that was when Brian uh, from Pravada had called me up and said he wanted to uh, do the uh, re 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 rebirth of the uh, Red Screaming Sun Lancero okay. that was originally re released in 2014 as a limited run. Okay. So I released it to him and he sold a lot of cigars. I was really impressed by this guy who had started this online cigar club. <laughs> and uh, in building my relationship with him and the FDA thing kind of calming down a little bit over time, uh, it was time to relaunch the new beginning, which was a project that was shelled uh, prior to the FDA scare okay. of around 2013 14 so that's how long that cigar was in the making okay so i was trying to come up with a blend for it and uh some of you may be familiar with it we ran a contest on pravada mm -hmm. after doing 30 some blends it came down to coincidentally 25 and 26 that were our personal favorites and several hundred people voted and 26 got in but the, the vote was too close so we decided to uh, release the uh, the other one, the 25, as a okay. Pravada exclusive. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. So when you, looking at what you offer in your core lines and this, um, when you blend a cigar, are you blending more to your palate? Are you blending as a, like a wide variety? Like how, what does that look like? I think everyone out there would like to say that you're doing it for the end consumer, which I do stand behind because it's not you who has to buy a lot of cigars. It's the public <laughs> that has to buy a lot of cigars right. in order to make it viable. So, but I also believe that, yeah, I think you're always in the back of your head wanting what you like. You're not going to right. release something that you don't enjoy. Okay. Okay. And are you, where does your palate lie on the mild, the medium, the full? Uh, you know what? Depends on uh, the occasion. Depends on the time okay. of day. And uh, hence having the red screaming sum, the white blinding light, the El Nuevo Comienzo, the classics, so that you can kind of pick and choose depending on where your uh, palate's at for the day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, in the process of the Comienzo, was it Brian that came to you with Pravada Cigar Club? Like, how did he find you or did you seek him out? <laughs> That's a good question, how he found me. I don't know. He just decided to call me about the Red Lanceros. And we we kind of established a friendship, like, very okay. quickly. We just kind of, we were in sync with one another. And I told him about this cigar that I was planning on launching at some point. And I think he was kind of an integral part of uh, motivating me to, okay, get going with this thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You've told me about it a million times, and it's been on the shelf for a long time. Why don't you do it? And really, that's how it it happened, just with a okay. little push from Brian and something that was already in the pipeline. Yeah. So here at the shop, I mean, we're S Southern California, um, and we are a part of um, the LCA with Brian's Pravada Cigar Club. 
Um, yeah. And so when we got the release, what we do for all the LCA cigars, we do a formal tasting. So pre-reservation event, you get the cigar, and then you also pair it with some kind of whiskey, cognac, and then we cut at same time, light at same time, and experience the cigar together. Um, and for some people with a lighter palate, they were like, this is a pretty full body. Um, for yeah. someone who me that I prefer that medium plus, um, it's a home run. I mean, I even posted um, a while ago, you, you probably saw, I'm not, I don't want to be that guy. I have a pet peeve of people that own shops that you walk in and you're like, Hey, if you like X brand, then you have to smoke this because you won't know the difference. However, the quality in this cigar reminds me of another brand that of high, high accolades. And it's just, it's like I said, I have to stop myself from smoking. It's a f fantastic cigar. Well, I think I know what you're referring to, and it's a it's a very uh, high compliment uh, for you to say that because that is one of the uh, cigars that I, I highly admire. I okay. I just uh, can't say anything anything bad about that brand. That I think you're referring to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so per perhaps there's a little bit of a of a subconscious kind of a, uh, how do you call it? Oh, what's that word I'm looking for? Affiliation, maybe? Inspiration. Inspiration, maybe. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. But, but I also think that El Nuevo Comienzo, the blend that's there, was sort of needed in the portfolio. Yeah. We had all of the other boxes ticked you know, with the classic, the white, the red. And right. I think it was time for that fuller bodied uh, cigar. Okay. So and we didn't so want to release something until we were ready to release it. And that's right. why it took almost seven years to do it. Right. And do all of your blends, are they Nicaraguan primarily? Primarily Nicaraguan, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so going from so going from having a house blend and then a shop, um, did you end up going down to Nicaragua to start your own like yeah. blend, stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I went to Nicaragua, and that's where that's where the uh, the inspiration came from. There, 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 and going to Cuba many times as a retailer, I was okay. really fascinated by these places. Yeah, uh, and and just felt so privileged to be able to see these places. I mean, as a cigar lover, right? I mean, you grow up in a in a small city in in Canada. I mean, you don't even fathom that this stuff exists, really. You know, you're yeah, going to yeah. Uh, you're going on vacation, you're staying in a resort kind of thing, and you know there's a few guys sitting there smoking by the pool. Is your experience <laughs> with cigars in in the Caribbean, and then all of a sudden, when you take that plunge and you go down as a as a cigar lover and go to the factories, there's just this inspiration that comes to you, and yeah. For me, it just had to be done. Right, 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 right. So, so being a previous shop owner, um, is there a, some aspects you miss about about owning a shop, about being in the shop regularly? Yeah, having a paycheck. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I do. Uh, I miss the camaraderie with people on a daily basis, which. Uh, you get you get used to it like i used to be in a shop 12 hours a day and all all day you're having people come in to buy a cigar but very quickly you become friends with each person right right you right you establish a rapport with guys you know you can see them coming down the parking lot and you know what to get prepared for them you know that this is a guy who's going to stay for uh, you know 3 4 hours this is a guy who's going to smoke this this is going a guy who's going to say have a drink with me yeah. and I, I miss that, but I think to some extent we all do during COVID, right? And right. Oh yeah. 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 So, so getting your brand out, um, what does that look like? Because I know you're an international brand, correct? Um, it, it, I, I guess I'm not sure exactly how how uh, how big you mean that statement. I, but but I mean in multiple countries and such like that, and yeah. getting into the states. Um, do you like, how do you get boots on the ground? Is it a lot social media? Is it through reps or? I really suck at social media, unfortunately. <laughs> so I wish I could say it was social media, but I think that I have connected with people via social media that, that definitely played a role. No okay. question. Yeah. I, I just have to downplay it because of my uh, lack of ability in the world of social media. Um, I, I think it just came from establishing a relationship with this person and then that led to the next person and the next yeah. person and it's sort of a, a chain reaction. Okay. Yeah. 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 
So in, in releasing your brands, uh, did you release multiple um, facings at once? Did you have one single flagship and then built on it? What, what did that look like? Uh, 2011 was the classic line, uh, which was consisted of five Vitolas. And that proved to be challenging in itself <laughs> um, because you would roll an equal amount to start of each one. And well, this week, Toros were selling and torpedoes weren't selling. And then you sell out of one. And the next thing you know, you've got a, a headache, of course, <laughs> as, as <laughs> anybody with any business can probably uh, attest to. But uh, it was a year later that I had met Guillermo Pena, who, uh, who, who still I work with uh, on a daily basis with on um, cigars. Okay. And we just said, okay, well, in order to make this ours with the new relationship between the two of us, we got to come up with some new stuff. Yeah. And hence yeah. white blinding light and red screaming sun. And at the time was black midnight fire as well, but that's been shelved for a while because it, I just found it a little bit too similar to the classic line. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We got a question from Francis um, about how is the culture in Nova Scotia? And what's it like living there currently? Oh my gosh, uh, great question. Uh, it's it's a great place to live. Uh, there's no complaints. It's a little bit quiet, particularly during COVID, and it's uh, it's definitely <laughs> not uh, it's not cigar land by any stretch of the imagination. So I miss I miss Florida. I miss Florida and uh, I miss uh, Nicaragua. I'd love to uh, go back, but we have a two week quarantine in a hotel that's mandatory when you come home here. Yeah, so yeah. Your seven day excursion turns into the better part of a month with the uh, significant expenses. So, right. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm really answering the question about the, the culture here. Uh, it's, a, it's probably bigger than one would think, but okay. smaller than most places. But it's it's a it's a friendly place, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> when you went to to Florida, was there a bit of a culture shock as far as like I? Because I know I've never been to Florida myself, but I know it's kind of kind of the hub for cigars in America. Um, yeah. So, what was that transition like? Um, it wasn't hard because I was going there as a, as just a loosely uh, loosely using the word vacation kind of thing uh, but it was always cigar related like I went to the trade show in Tampa or I would uh, go to Miami to see the factories in Little Havana and stuff like that so I had over the years as a young guy I had become accustomed to Miami okay. and, and developed friendships so it wasn't a shock at all it was uh, it's just one of the greatest places uh, around gotcha yeah and the weather must have been a little bit different, I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, a little bit different, yeah. yeah. So um, something about the Paul Stulak brand, um, it's very striking. The labels are very striking. Um, and on, I mean, it's it's somewhat sort of smaller to see on this label right here. It's kind of the emblem at the top. But the logo of Paul Stulak, you kind of have the shield and and, and the skull and the angel wings. So where, where did that come from? What's the inspiration behind that? It was, it was done at a time when uh, that really wasn't being done to the extent it is now in the industry. So I just wanted to stand out, kind of. I, I knew I couldn't sell the tickets that I was a 100-year-old uh, cigar company and put myself on a white horse in the ads and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> you know, strolling through a tobacco field. Right, so, right. Uh, it, it sort of just started as, hey, how, how, how to stand out a little bit. It was just kind of cool imagery that I like. And then it became even more complicated when I started working with the designer who finally just told me to get the hell out of his office. We're done. It's it's completed. You can't tweak it anymore. <laughs> you can't add anything else. There's just nothing to be done here. Um, so that's, that, that's really what it was. It was just to sort of uh, stand out. Okay. And... In correlation to that, I uh, did the ads in the magazines saying no 100-year traditions, no uh, you know, no tales of tobacco fields, no pretenses, because I wanted to right. throw it out there that hey, I'm just a just a guy who likes cigars and uh, <laughs> taking a shot here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then the the label on the Comienzo itself, because um, it's a very striking band. Uh, wh where did the inspiration come from there? 
Uh, because it's, it, it represents a, a, a defeated spirit. And I think that everyone in the industry had a defeated spirit at the time when I was coming up with that uh, concept. Okay. And it, it, it just refers to a biblical story about Jacob fighting the angel and basically realizing he was fighting himself the whole time. Yeah, yeah. So, hence the new beginning, El Nuevo Comienzo. I just thought after almost 10 years, okay, I can sort of depart from just doing skulls and I can become a little more traditional and, well, and not get called out on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and yeah. And it's very, very dynamic. Um, and you. it's funny because with the LCA, it exposes us to a lot of new things. And most of the cigars in our humidor are boutique blends. I sort of look at it more in the, the, the industry of like craft brewing and what craft beer has in that industry and the quality that you taste. So LCA is a perfect lineup for us. And so to have this as the first Paul Stulak cigar that comes into our humidor, it was kind of like lighting it up. It's like, okay, where did this come from? It's it's very unique. It's very striking. Um, oftentimes I feel as a cigar smoker, as your journey continues, you start noticing, oh, well, this is good, but it's a cigar. And I've had a cigar before, or it's not really standing out. Paul Stulak yeah. line is not that. Paul Stulak line is definitely to hear that. well. And I mean, as you kind of say in your labels, I want it to stand out. I think your blends stand out, stand out as their own. Um, and it's refreshing to find someone in that industry kind of coming in, as you say, you're not the strolling through the tobacco fields, but there's something to say in all your blends. So, so congrats on the blends. They're, they're amazing. You learn from your mistakes, and you know when it was first launched. I mean, you know there was there was mistakes made, and um, you 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 have you have to learn from them and accept that you made the mistakes. Yeah, yeah, and correct them as quickly as possible. And I think that uh, I, I don't normally I'm not the type of person who likes to uh, give myself credit, but I think that between Guillermo and myself, that's one thing that we did correctly. We quickly adapted to what people were saying. Because I've always had this, uh, I've always loved this quote. I don't really know who said it or anything like that. But if you if you want to believe in all the positive hype and publicity, you also have to accept the negative and the mm -hmm. critical. Yeah, you can't just yeah. pick and choose what you like to hear and right. go with that. Right. So when mistakes were made and we were called out, which was minimal, I have to admit, thankfully. Uh, we adapted very, very quickly and said, better, okay. uh, better fix this, better fix this, better do this, better do that. And yeah, also definitely. to not try and grow too quick is a big thing. I think. With right. The, right. The cigar. Industry. So we also have another question. Uh, how do you like to cut your cigar? Is it normally V cut punch or guillotine? Which do you prefer? I hate being asked this question, uh, <laughs> particularly when I was a retailer selling cutters and you selling <laughs> cutters, but I bite. <laughs> I I use a bullet punch if I if I but usually I'm just one of those people who doesn't have a cutter with me, so I just bite it off. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, okay. Not I, I was recently uh, hearing several other reps saying that they use their fingernail. Apparently, it's okay. very common to just cut it off with your fingernail. I've never tried it. It sounds a little bit messy to me, but I, I, mean, yeah. I, I guess it can be done. Um, we have uh, chicks and where your sticks. Fingers have been, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. We have chicks and sticks with us. Uh, this is a question I normally save for the end when I'm talking to someone because, again, it's probably a question you're going to hate because it's it's a hard one to answer. But if you are put on the spot out of your cigars, what do you think is your personal favorite? I know it's kind Popular of a question, and I, and I never, I never have the response that I want for that. I, I figure <laughs> there's got to be this magical answer to being asked this question. Um, the best I could say is that it probably goes in cycles. Uh, so for me to say that, yeah, forever, this is the cigar. It just kind of goes in cycles. Lately, I've been smoking no dress coats for whatever reason. They just. I've got this newfound obsession with cognac, and I find they pair well with cognac. So I okay. kind of started doing that. Uh, I had to take a, I had to, uh, I had to rest my palate from the El Nuevos because I was just kind of uh, making a glutton of myself with them. So, <laughs> so you know that that was the new one. So of course I gravitated to that for the longest time. Right. Uh, right. Okay. 
I, I guess uh, I guess the uh, the classic uh, Phantasma probably because it was the first cigar that we blended and released. There's always a little bit of a special feeling about that. Right, right. And uh, as I noticed, you're pairing your cigar tonight with a drink. Are you drinking cognac right now? I, I am actually. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I've got a, I've got a, I've got other stuff here, but I thought I'd have one cognac. I'm trying to, go. I'm trying to slow it down. <laughs> <laughs> So um, when you when you go to Nicaragua, are you primarily doing all the blending? Is it a collaboration between you and Guillermo, or what does that look like? I'd be crazy to say that I could do this without Guillermo because he's just such he's a wealth of knowledge. He just knows everything that there is to know as far as I can uh, see. Uh, so without him, impossible uh, for this type of quality. Could I, okay. could I do it? In that, you know, to have the cigars that we have, it's a collaboration and we both just mesh with that for some reason. It just worked the minute that we met. I don't know what that is. It's kind of like I said of O'Brien from Pravada, you just certain people yeah. you connect with and yeah. great things happen. And that's really the way it is. So to say that he, he would do it without me or I would do it without him. Right. Don't even, think, don't right. even think about it on the lines. Gotcha. Now, in, in the in the classic series um, that you blended, what what is the wrapper leaf on that cigar? It's a, it's a Habano Ecuadorian, and uh, okay. we, we were we were the, the first time when we released that cigar, we we had a very light colored Ecuadorian band on it, okay. and we did it as a Maduro and a lighter shade uh, cigar. Um, I don't know if you you'd agree with me. I mean, you're a shop owner, so the trend is just darker cigars, it's just the way yeah. it is. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't get so we stopped making the uh, the, the the light colored, and went with just the uh, the, the dark uh, wrapper. And, well, and and your um your your red band, which is which is which line again? Or red screaming sun. Okay, so that one is Connecticut Broadleaf, correct? That, no, that one has the Connecticut Broadleaf, yeah. Yeah, so, and, and I mean, Mom, for me Mom, personally, Mom. where my palate lies, I tend to really enjoy Connecticut Broadleaf. I love the nature of that tobacco. I love the creaminess, the full force that it has. Yeah. Um, but it also, I mean, as an earlier on cigar, and I, I kind of, for some manufacturers that use that tobacco, it can be a struggle, as I understand, because of the shortage and the price and all of that. Um, was that something that was a challenge up front or did, was it progressively becoming more of a challenge as production continued? Yeah, no, it's not, a, it's not a challenge anymore. I think the challenge with Connecticut Broadleaf that I find, and I'm not uh, singling any, any one cigar out, uh, out there, but is to, that it has to go with the blend of the cigar or uh, I'm a big believer in balance. Okay. I love balance in cigars. That's one yeah. thing that I find that it, uh, every 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 item needs i don't care if it's wine if it's cognac or cigars you got to have balance and i think connecticut broadleaf i think a lot of uh, brands kind of miss the mark on that okay the, missing the blend to the wrapper mm -hmm. so yeah so that was that was a challenge in the beginning but uh, we overcame it pretty quickly because like i yeah. said we we wouldn't release it if we didn't like it and as soon as we were told tweak it we did <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So another question from Francis, and this is actually one I I don't know if you're able to say, but is very interesting. Is there another future LCA release coming from Paul Stulak? Oh my gosh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Uh, we uh, ha we have nothing uh, immediate. It's uh, the farm roll takeover took took place. I uh, don't know if you heard about that for uh, yeah. Oh yeah next month or whatever okay so that's you know one one thing at a time and that's what uh, brian and i also learned in working together for a couple of years now is not to rush things so yeah we, yeah okay we awesome. purposely just kind of one thing at a time well and what i will it's also definitely not off the table and and uh the reason i like that question from francis is that um we get the lca release every month um, and there is a handful of regulars that come to our shop and attend all the, the LCA tastings. So, I mean, what LCA does good well is they offer every time they release something a month, it's a wide palette. So there's always something for somebody. Um, yep. But what I will say, this 
the group that normally comes that are here on a regular basis, in my mind, is almost like a mental tasting panel. Um, and th this is not this is not me just saying this because you're on the show. But so far, the Paul Stulak release has not been beaten as far as enjoying. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's cool. it's and so when we uh, when I was talking to Clark, um, when I, we always talk every month, hey, what do you got? This that, and he said, hey, we got uh, Limitada still available. I was like, send them whatever you got, send them. Um, because oh, wow. it's just a phenomenal cigar. It's it, as a shop owner, it's the type of cigar that's that hidden gem that you want in your humidor. Um, and so that I think that who knows down the line, there may be another LCA release, but if it is, we will be greatly anticipating it. <laughs> Here's the best way for me to answer that question in retrospect now is whatever the people want, if people want to come in and buy a cigar and it's working, We'll, we'll we'll keep doing it. So it's really it's really in the in the uh, the, the fans of the cigars hands to to determine the future. Do you do you any more uh, attend any of the shows? Like I know TPE is less expensive. Does that is that ever on your radar? I, they're all on my radar. I, I shelved everything. I obviously during COVID. Uh, it's it's right. not the right. I'm not anti trade show. Like I I'd love to go to all of them. Uh, I, I'm just at a spot where I'd rather say, here, try my cigar than spend money on getting to the trade show, setting up the trade show, hiring yeah. all the people, staying in the hotels, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. Now, in coming up in 2020 and 2021, um, also don't know if you're – able to say or not but um, are there other projects in the works to add to your portfolio uh, i think that uh for for now it's going to be the el nuevo comienzo and there will be a, a, a range of vitolas coming out in, okay. in that yeah like uh a, a tor there's a torpedo and there's going to be a a, a churchill in, in it so because they smoke so well in a in a churchill that it just has to be done it has to okay. be okay well, anyone and, who's promoted in Churchill version is just blown away by it. So, okay. And I mean, if there's any complaint I have about the Comienzo line, is that I wish they would last longer in the sense I wish they were bigger. So that's great news because <laughs> I, I enjoy the cigar and I'm always like, oh man, I wish there was more of it. I, <laughs> and so that's that's awesome coming out. Do you have a favorite vi Vitola to to uh, have in your line? Um, I. I, for some reason, I gravitate towards torpedoes. I think it's not—it's not a conscious thing. It just kind of happens. I think it's because I like to uh, chew on my cigar. I mean, <laughs> like if I was—if I was—if I wasn't speaking with you, I'd have it. You know, I, I'm that guy, right? The guy <laughs> that out of his mouth for uh, way longer than I should. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're when you're coming up with blends and such, is there a particular size that you blend to, or is it just Toro. depend on the tobacco? Toro. Toro? Toro. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. H hence why El Nuevo Comienzo was launched as a Toro. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, I, I, I just find it's, uh, it's not an extreme to, you know, if you, uh, if you go to an extreme, it doesn't really give you a representation of what that's going to smoke like on the other extreme of the size right. or shape. Right. Now, with the with the labels, as I kind of alluded to, and I can actually almost see it in the, your background, you have sort of a, a line going through it. almost looks like lightning or whatever. What exactly is that symbol? It's actually a stylized S that's been a part of my logo since I was a kid. Okay. And okay. Yeah. When I did the, uh, the skull logo, that was one of the final things. I went, well, hold on. I need to have that S in there somewhere. So... The design that was on the shield quickly got changed, and I said, "Just put the stylized S there." So it's just always been a part of everything I've done. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, and and I know that in in Canada there is a lot of issues with like tobacco tax, or it's not the most tobacco friendly country. Um, in California, it's not the most tobacco friendly state as far as taxes okay. and all that. Um, are you more predominant, would you say in, in Canada or would you say in the States? No, the U S I, I, I've, I, I, when I said I have a fascination with like the cigar, uh, countries like Nicaragua and stuff, I also have this absolute fascination with the USA. 
Okay. Since since I was a kid, so that was like sort of where I went to launch the cigar, and I just kind of stuck with it. It okay. doesn't mean that Canada doesn't mean anything to me. It's just right. that there's been a, a lot of red tape uh, yes. in getting the cigars. You have to have an import license and a distributor, which uh, is in the works right now. So for the Canadian people who want the cigars, they will be able to get them fairly soon. Um, nice. Okay. It just started as a U.S. thing because of obviously you go to the trade show. A Canadian can't walk up to your booth and just say, send me cigars to my store. It has to go through yeah. a distributor. So yeah. it just kind of, it just kind of happened that way. Right, 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 right. And I mean, keeping it, I mean, it seems like with the company as Paul Sulak as a whole is, is somewhat cl played close to the chest. Is that something you prefer or is that something that you want to, Hey, I want to expand to reps or like, where, where do you see it going? Uh, I kind of think that at this point, I am at a point where I've learned to just let things evolve naturally as okay. opposed to making the big hardcore not to say that you don't plan for the future but i think right. sometimes you sit there and you decide that this is the way it's going to be and you start working on it in this direction that you don't see when you should be turning off the road to a, a different avenue yeah yeah, so, yeah. Um, to, to to say yes or no i don't think there's an answer right now it's what it, yeah. i believe in what it evolves to is what it will evolve into yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Awesome. And uh, something that's common in a lot of cigar portfolios, at least it appears to be as, as a retail shop owner, is that there is typically your three main average tobacco types. You have your Connecticut, you have your kind of Sun Grown or Corojo or Habano, and then you have your Maduro. Um, but as far as I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, in your portfolio, do you offer a Connecticut cigar? And if not, do you see that down the line? I do see it, yes, yes, okay. because I get asked. I get asked uh, way too many times uh, <laughs> in, in the run of a day, almost, to just not do it. It would be crazy. So it's 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 there, but again, when it's right, when okay. when that right blend comes along, we'll we'll definitely uh, give those people what they are looking for. Okay, the mild because I, I, I there's times when I do like a mild, creamy cigar. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we have we have a, we have a comment from Jim Dougherty who watches all of our live shows. Um, so he's made it to here, and he's very happy to hear about the Pravada Farm Rolled Takeover, um, of which he just uh, joined, or he has the the Farm Rolled subscriptions. So what when 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 that those words are dropped, Farm Rolled Takeover? What exactly does that mean? What is what is your role in that? You have to ask Brian because <laughs> Brian comes up with this stuff and I'm just a deer in the headlights at how creative this guy is. So <laughs> all I know is that the, uh, these cigars are farm rolled for okay. the next farm rolled up project kind of thing. So uh, okay. it's a takeover. I mean, it's some, somebody else did it last time. So this brand took over for this gotcha. uh, okay. period okay. is really what it works out to. But I'm sure there's a way more creative way to explain it uh, that I can't even <laughs> try to compete with Brian. Okay. All right. Now, and and I, I know, I mean, you've kind of alluded to some of the struggles in having a cigar brand. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the cigar, cigar brand Dapper Cigar Company. I've heard, I've heard the name. I don't know anything about it, but uh, I've heard yeah. I've heard the word before, yeah. Yeah, we're it, it's a really good like boutique line. We had Ian on our show. Uh, he's from California as well, um, and he alluded to the fact that sometimes there's those blends that like they're not quite where they they should be, and it's a long journey. Did you have that kind of process on some of your facings or your lines? Um, <laughs> seven years of working on the Nuevo Comienzo, I guess, constitutes a long <laughs> time. <laughs> um, but I. I no, I, th I think that for, for us, it usually comes together fairly quickly as far as the blend. With El Nuevo Comienzo, there was just so many cool versions of it that it okay. was just impossible to say this is the one. And then we just came up with the idea to have the contest. Yeah. And okay. Without it, I don't know. I think I'd, I'm probably the guy who would still be sitting there, you know, making an excuse to smoke 10 a day of each to try to decide. <laughs> <laughs> 
And and uh, a question I normally pose to a lot of blenders, manufacturers, um, outside of your own stuff, do you enjoy smoking other brands? And if so, is there, do you smoke most of your stuff? By default, you end up smoking a lot of your own stuff. But I love I love other cigars, absolutely. Okay. There's so many, so many great cigars out there that I'm not even going to begin to single one out. Uh, there's one that I'm very passionate about, uh, you know, like which I kind of said earlier. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of that cigar. <laughs> which I, I almost just uh, ratted myself out on the earlier comments. But uh, no, there's just so many beautiful cigars out there that I don't think anybody should just pigeonhole themselves into one cigar ever. Yeah, yeah. And and when you're coming up with, okay, let's say Comienzo or Screaming Sun, what, what, is the, what would you say are some of the points that you draw inspiration from, whether it's the blend, whether it's the brand? What, what, what do you think? Where where do the, some of these ideas come from? It's cliche to say, but obviously the blend comes first and foremost. I mean, without the cigar, you really don't have anything. It's like a it's like a song, right? I mean, a band. You need the good song to be a good band, right? So it's, yeah. I think it's the same yeah. thing with cigars. It it obviously starts with the cigar, and then just whatever's inspiring you at the moment. I mean, like the whole uh, white blinding light, red screaming sun thing. The the concept of of the uh, the labels or the uh, the names came from uh, there was a song playing and it was uh, it was a old Roger McGuinn song that said in a white blinding light and that was where that started and where I wanted to okay. differentiate the new cigars I said well I'm gonna just use the oldest trick in the book colors right or numbers yeah. right whatever <laughs> You know, I mean, it's just, what, what else can you do? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, it started out as that kind of a thing, like white blinding light. And then I, I don't know, like what matches that and went to red screaming sun. Okay. I, I, I remember being in Hartford, Connecticut on a, on a tobacco plantation, uh, doing an event with a, a great guy who has a, a cigar store there, the tobacco shop. And I remember the sun coming over the horizon, going down uh, and, I just looked out and I thought the sun is screaming. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, but for by default, you don't say blue screaming sun. You say you're <laughs> orange or red and orange didn't sound as cool as red. So, so there's the concept behind the sticks and the, okay. uh, yeah, but blend the, the cigar is always first and foremost. Yeah. Well, and, and it's your companies. Um, not so much boutique side is sometimes I'll hear the stories of like, Hey, we need X brand. So we want it to sound like this, look like this. And so I want a blend that fits this mold. I've heard that several times towards, I always think that the, the reverse is better is, Hey, I've, I like this tobacco. I like this blend. And so we've yeah. come up with this amazing cigar. What is going to translate to the consumer about this cigar? Um, which I think yeah, is. No, I, I, I get you. Yeah, I get you. Uh, I think for me, it's what gone both ways. Like I said, you're standing in a tobacco field in uh, Connecticut, you know, 45 minutes from Hartford. The sun's going down, and you're like, okay, I need, a, I need to do this, and this has to obviously be a Connecticut wrapper. Yeah. So in that case, it was more the other way around. Okay. The, the okay. Name inspired the cigar, whereas the white blinding light was a cigar that was ready to go but just needed something cool yeah to, uh label it yeah it okay white white blinding light is is there a type of tobacco that you have not been able to incorporate into your blends that you would like to use in the future i i'd have to be honest i would say not really uh guillermo's done a tremendous job of of uh seeking out whatever was needed uh, so no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, uh, the, the, San Andreas to get the, the right San Andreas for that El Nuevo Comienzo wasn't easy, of course, uh, as anyone in the industry will tell you, because you can get the, uh, the, 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 the lower type of grade, what have you. Um, uh, we didn't want that. We wanted it right. to be a, a premium, premium cigar at a fair price. And I think we accomplished that. Right. No, definitely. Um, and something that really, I mean, when we, when we did our live, when we did our tasting, um, and we did both Comienzos back to back, one of the more predominant flavor notes of the San Andreas was this has a very chocolate cocoa 
expression to it. Um, and you have that kind of a little bit of pepper up front, but then it moves to that like chocolate um, that's really like fleshed out. Um, and I think that speaks to what you're saying, that high grade of Mexican San Andreas, that once you're smoking it, you're like, I, I know like during the cigar boom for a while in the, the mid to late 90s, San Andreas was almost a bad word because you could just get it anywhere weren't really quality cigars but really i think we're seeing almost i don't know i mean correct me if i'm wrong but almost a resurgence of that tobacco when it's done correctly and aged properly i'd agree with you 100 percent, absolutely yeah but it has to be done properly but i think that's the case with any any of these tobaccos on any of these cigars if you if you miss on one one part of it you're the the the, the, the sum of all the parts don't work Right. So you can you can grab San Andreas, the best that exists, but if you don't back it up with the proper blend that's going to complement it or vice versa, well, you really have nothing again, right? Right, right, right. So uh, another question I normally pose uh, to a lot of manufacturers and blenders is on uh, average, how many cigars would you say that you end up going through a day? <laughs> I can, I can, I can, I can do. Uh, I, I was up to about ten. Okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little less now, but that's a that's a supply issue, not a desire uh, uh, issue. <laughs> okay. And and I mean, are you when, when you go down, Canada? <laughs> <laughs> when you go down to Nicaragua, um, are you are be are you like while during the the blending? Are you like tasting and smoking fumas and getting through this whole process, or is it more of like you want to wait till the end product and see what that's like? What what's that? What's that look like for you? All all, all over the place. Um, like uh, like I hate to keep repeating myself, but I don't pigeon my whole my pigeonhole myself to one method. Okay. Sometimes sometimes it's you stumble on it and you just trip over it like a banana peel, and other times you have to explore you know 25 different ways to uh just to get the preliminary okay yeah so yeah i don't think that there's any one thing that we prescribe to and that's our system right I, right we have I a think it'd, be, it'd be pretty cool if i could say that we did have a system but it's it's sort of not really a system at all it's a organized yeah. chaos yeah <laughs> Well, we have uh, Matt here uh, here at the shop as well, and he says you got him beat by four cigars a day. So, <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I'm uh, always up for a, a challenger. <laughs> so, <laughs> get to work, Matt. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, Paul, I mean, I want to I want to thank you for being on the show with us um, and talking Thanks. about the Comienzo. Um, again, it's a home run. For those watching, if you have not tried it, I highly recommend you do. Click on the link that's in this video that will direct you to our website. We have it available in a five pack right now, discounted rate. Um, and definitely, if you can stand the pressure, definitely age this cigar. Uh, smoke a few right out the gate, get a feel for it. But also, I, I foresee it um, really rising to the top. Um, so, yeah, no, thank you again, Paul, for joining us on this uh, live. And once again, thank you for the cigars. They're a great line. It's an honor to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks for anybody. If, if, if there is actually anyone out there listening to me, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you again. You take it easy. And uh, we hope to see more on the horizon from Paul Stulak. Well, let's keep in touch. All right. Thanks so much.